guys i would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to miss fountain channel support this by liking the video sharing and also subscribing in this session we're going to look at lineage markers and that is the y chromosome and empty dna testing that is mitochondrial dna a basic introduction you find that they are passed down from generation to generation without changing well except for mutational events maternal lineages can be traced with mitochondrial dna sequence information and paternal lineages can be followed with y chromosome markers and we are going to begin with mitochondrial dna that is empty dna sequencing mitochondria are very small organelles that are found outside the cell nucleus within the cell's cytoplasm each mitochondrion has its own dna mitochondrial dna that is empty dna is only inherited maternally therefore it's not unique to to any one person because you find that a mother and her child have the same mitochondrial dna and each individual will share the same mitochondrial DNA sequence with their mother, their siblings, as well as other maternal relatives. Because of the shared mitochondrial DNA profile between maternal family members, empty DNA is not as discriminating as the nuclear DNA analysis. Because nuclear DNA analysis is, uh, is specific to, to one person. However, mitochondrial DNA has several properties that make it useful in forensic science. We are going to look at them. Mitochondrial DNA is circular in shape in contrast to nuclear DNA, which, is, which has a long linear configuration that is packaged into chromosomes. Mitochondrial DNA's circular shape enables it to be stable over time because it's less, it's less susceptible to degradation. There are also many copies of mitochondrial DNA per cell than the nuclear DNA, making mitochondrial DNA testing more sensitive than the nuclear DNA testing. And this stability and additional sensitivity allows mitochondrial DNA to be utilized in cases that involve skeletonized remains or even old biological samples that are not able to yield a, a nuclear DNA profile. Okay, we also find that mitochondrial DNA is useful in cases of mass disaster where the remains may be subjected to harsh conditions like maybe salty water, there could be charring or even other elements that cause the DNA to degrade. And as a consequence of the maternal inheritance of empty DNA, empty DNA analysis allows for the comparison of remains to more distantly related individuals than the nuclear comparisons allows. Empty DNA is going to allow, you can compare anybody as long as they are from the same maternal lineage in this aspect is helpful in cases where no immediate family members are available to supply a, a reference sample and in addition to remains identification cases mitochondrial dna is routinely used to to compare dna that is derived from single hairs with non-reference samples Hairs with intact roots can yield enough nuclear DNA for STR analysis, but hairs without available roots will typically be unable to produce any analyzable nuclear DNA. Even very small cut hairs are capable of generating a mitochondrial DNA profile for comparison. And because empty DNA analysis is time consuming, that is one of its limitations. And it's not statistically discriminating as nuclear DNA, 
mitochondrial DNA analysis is usually only performed on hair or other evidence when there is no other physical evidence that is uh, that is available for investigation in laboratories that perform mitochondrial DNA sequencing can only process of one or two empty DNA cases per analyst per month that is because these processes take they take quite some time compared to the other processes of generating DNA profiles. MTDNA analysis for criminal cases can only be performed when a reference sample is available for comparison. And also, unlike nuclear DNA analysis, a database does not exist for the comparison of unknown mitochondrial profiles from criminal cases. Now we are going to look at Y chromosome STR analysis. Because many sexual assault cases involve the DNA typing of a semen donor, and most cases or most case samples are a mixture of a complainant and semen donor sources, a technology focusing on the Y chromosome, which is only present in males, has been developed. Y, chromo y, y STRs are useful in forensic testing because they are specific to the Y chromosome and therefore to male DNA. YSTR analysis is able to simplify interpretation in cases where there is a mixture of male and female DNA by focusing on the male portion of DNA only. And YSTR is also applicable to cases where there is a, a mixture of more than two people. And in complex mixture cases, such as this, like YSTR analysis can provide information on how male donors have contributed to a sample. It's also instructive in cases where semen is present on a sample but no sperm type is detected because the ratio of complainant to sperm DNA is too large. And in cases where the complainant is female, the complainant's contribution to the DNA in a sample is ignored and the YSDR profile can be identified for the semen donor. And it's well known that vasectomized rapists do not leave sperm traces and it is impossible to find spermatozoa on the microscopic analysis or microscopic examination. And in such cases, YSDR profiling is very useful, offering information regarding the identity of the rapist. Why STR analysis is essentially the same as STR analysis, and the only real difference is that the primers for Y STR analysis are specific to male. Human DNA, instead of being human specific, they are specific to male human DNA. And male specific quantification kits have been developed to determine the amount of male DNA. And we have limitations for this. Y chromosome is inherited in parental, that is meaning it's passed from father to son. Therefore, the male relatives will have the same Y profile as other male members of the family. And for this reason, YSTR is not as statistically discriminating as nuclear DNA. Consequently, YSTR analysis is usually employed as an extension of nuclear DNA testing to provide additional information and will not replace the additional nuclear DNA testing. There is also no searchable database for comparing a non STR profiles from crime scenes to non individuals. For YSTR casework to be useful, a reference sample must be available for comparison. Those are the lineage markers that we have that is empty.